So let's look now at the idea of a Hamiltonian cycle on a directed graph. Now we have to follow the flow of the edges. And instead of looking at a Hamiltonian cycle, I want to look at a Hamiltonian path. This is a walk, not necessarily closed, that visits each vertex exactly once. Now we saw that every graph with big enough degree on each vertex will have a Hamiltonian cycle. So of course it'll have a Hamiltonian path. The complete graph has as many edges as possible on a simple graph, right? It has, every vertex has n minus one edges because every possible neighbor is a neighbor. A tournament is a direction on the complete graph. So a tournament, it stands to reason, will have a Hamiltonian path just because of the idea of lots of edges. But it's not obvious that that would be the case. Let's look at this example of a tournament on K5. If we think about this vertex, if we try to walk away from this vertex, we can't. All edges actually flow into it. This is a sink. So if we start here, we cannot take any steps anywhere. So a Hamiltonian path is going to have to end here. So that, that's kind of scary that we already know it has to end here and it can't start here. So it's already fairly restrictive. Let's see what happens if we try to start here and take a walk. Well, obviously we can't do this because now we're stuck. Okay, so the last thing we touch is that. Okay, well, we could walk over here and then over here and now we have to go here and we're stuck. So we didn't do it. So it's a little tricky to try to figure out, okay, how can we do this Hamiltonian path? Well, let's try another path. Let's go here. Sorry, let me draw that a little more on the line. We'll go along here, and then we can go up here, down here, and now we've done it. Now we have our Hamiltonian path. But it wasn't obvious that we would get one. So let's see why this is true. Whenever something's not obvious, even when it is obvious, it's good to have a proof. For tournaments, because tournaments are such specific things, we're going to do it by induction. Because tournaments are always on Kn, so that gives us a natural thing to do by induction on the number of vertices. And there's a nice recursive structure to tournaments. Okay, So we're going to proceed by induction on n, which is the number of vertices. So what's our base case? We always want to do the base case. Um, in this case, n equals 1 is our base case. Um, here is k1. It's a single vertex. And this is vacuously true that there is a Hamiltonian path. Um, before you take any steps, you visited every vertex. Let's do another case, not because we need to, just to kind of see it in action. So if we have k2, no matter which way we direct this edge, we can take the step from the source to the sink. We can step along the edge and that'll give us a Hamiltonian path. So yep, we can solve this one. So our base case is done. So we're going to assume, we're going to make an inductive hypothesis. We're going to assume that this is, um, that any tournament on kn minus 1 has a Hamiltonian path. That's our inductive hypothesis. Okay, and now we're going to let T be a tournament on Kn. We need to prove that T has a Hamiltonian path. So the first thing to do is knock ourselves down to the, to the inductive case. So let V in V be any vertex on T. Any vertex at all, okay? Then if we take T and we remove V and all incident edges, this is like taking the graph here, removing this vertex, and removing these edges. What are you left with? Well, you can kind of see in the picture. Oh, sorry, I need to take that edge away as well. What are you left with? You're left with K4. So this is a tournament. Remember, we have directions. A tournament on Kn minus 1. So by induction, there is a Hamiltonian path. So at this point, let's draw a picture. That usually helps. Here's a nice picture. Okay, this, these are the vertices on k n minus 1, and this is my Hamiltonian path. So this is the Hamiltonian path. Hamiltonian path. And here is my vertex v down at the bottom. Now, of course, v is connected to every vertex up here because we have the complete graph, okay? And we know that we have directions on these edges and the directions flow like this by induction. I've just picked which edges and I put my vertices in order because I know that H1 up to Hn minus one is a Hamiltonian path. That is my, that is my inductive hypothesis. So this guy has a Hamiltonian path.
Okay, so I need to show that I have a Hamiltonian path and I basically need to tack V onto my Hamiltonian path. Let's do some cases. So case one, what if I have V to H1 and I go like that? Well, that means that I've got an edge like this, so here's my Hamiltonian path. Cool, so I get a Hamiltonian path. My Hamiltonian path is V, H1, all the way up to H n minus one, done. Okay, what else could I do? That's one possibility. So let's think, how could I put V at the end? I could have H n minus one go to V. So what does that look like? That looks like I have an arrow like this, and here is my Hamiltonian path. So that one also works. Here's my Hamiltonian path. I take the one that I had, H n minus two, oh sorry, n minus one to V, done. Case three, okay? Case three, if not those, either of those previous cases, then there exists I such that we have the following situation. We have HI, we have HI plus one, and we have V. Here are my edges. Of course, I have this one. And I claim that I have to have down followed by up. Let's see why that's the case. So I've just said that I don't have this, okay? Which means that what do I gotta have? I've gotta have this. Otherwise, I could tack V onto the front. Similarly, at the end, I have to have an arrow like this. Otherwise, I could tack V uh, on to the end. So at some point, I can go down for a while, and at some point, I have to go up. So at some, I go down, say, to HI, and what's my first up vertex? Well, let's say it's HI plus one, okay? I know that the first thing is down, the last thing is up, so at some point they switch. And let's let I be the first point they switch at. I don't really mind when it is. But now, what's my Hamiltonian path? Well, I go over to I, I go down to V, back up, and continue along. That's my Hamiltonian path. So in this case, and this is the only case that remains, these three cases are exhaustive, my path is gonna be H1 all the way out to HI, tack on V, and then continue back up until you get to the end. So this is somewhat constructive in that I can do it iteratively. I can kind of build out my Hamiltonian path by adding vertices one at a time.